legs, where you see uh, number 8 cannot hear what number 12 is saying, yeah. number 27 cannot hear what 9 is saying, and that's the true hop distance. Exactly. Do you see here? This node will transmit to this one and this one, okay? So no nodes in the two hop distance can transmit at the same time as this node. But this node can because he is not in a two hop neighborhood of that one. And that's exactly what we want, okay? Because we want to allow parallel transmissions. Maybe you could say something about what does prioritization mean in uh, multi hop networks? Because it's not the definition of prioritization. Yeah, necessary. basically, we are just <laughs> prioritizing. It's, it's complicated. But we are prioritizing just in the two hop neighborhood. But it's more complex than. Yeah. So, uh, so I have one question on the previous slide. Okay. Uh, in this slide, if 8 wants to transmit, so this was an example that all nodes wanted to transmit. Okay, so why is 8 not allowed to transmit yeah. when 12 wants to transmit? It's a good question. Yeah, that is that is the the, compli the complicated part about this, is that uh, he has a node in its two-hop neighborhood that has a lower priority than him. No, no, so I'm asking... It, here it seems that if 12 wins the uh, tournament, mm -hmm. 8 cannot transmit. No, it's not because of that. No. It's because of some other node that is in its two hop neighborhood, or one. Like this one or this one, that have made him lose the tournament. Okay? Sh sure, sure. So, so suppose, I'm just assuming, suppose 12 had a higher priority than 8 in this particular picture. Oh man, that would probably change. What? Node 12 has a higher priority than node 8. And okay. Doesn't have uh, no, it doesn't. Right? It doesn't have it. Yeah. It doesn't no. have it. And oh. they both express interest. Uh, they are, okay. okay. Uh, but 12 would win because in 8 is its uh, two hop neighbor. Yes. Yeah. And so 12 would say 8 cannot transmit. Okay. Although 8 can because it transmission of 8 does not interfere with 12's transmission. Well, yeah, yeah, cannot listen These to two cannot transmit at the same time because it will yeah. collide yeah. in 27. <laughs> oh. okay. It's a wireless thing. <laughs> okay. We can maybe see if you want. So, the other topic uh, that I had there about the development of the MAC protocol was the development of an efficient of a low overhead implementation and, and uh, so what we had in our first prototype implementation was uh, a COTS based implementation using uh, transceivers that are on normal modes and these transceivers we made some experiments and to, to reliably detect uh, pulse we would need 500 microseconds to have it reliably detected and not with a very long range. Obviously, this was using the default threshold. Obviously, no, but this was using the default threshold of the, of the, of the radio. We could lower it, but anyway, this was the experiments we made. And we needed about 500 microseconds to have it reliably detected and not with a great range. And those uh, transceivers need 192 microseconds to switch from from sending to receive, okay? So basically our idea was uh, to try to lower these values. We didn't find any transceiver uh, that we could use in a mode to, uh, to, to do this. So we just built another prototype, uh, but now a hardware prototype where we could implement white on. And basically what we, what, we, what we have done was to have two modules separated, a uh, receive and a transmit module, and a, a high frequency switch to switch from receive to transmit. This doesn't uh, make the, the send to receive uh, uh, switching time zero, but it did decrease it a lot. And, okay, we implemented the, the protocol wide on 
also in this microcontroller because this would allow us to have better control of the timing because you see here we have to do things in the ranges of a few tens of microseconds so we, we need it or we need a microcontroller for that it's just using the microcontroller on the platform will basically enable it from the, the platform doing anything else uh, we also have uh, what we call a, a nanon board this rx module this is this is a, a receive module on another frequency. It's not necessarily for let's for wide on. It's not it's not exactly necessary, but we can use it to have uh, uh, out of band synchronization pulse. And having an out of band synchronization pulse basically enables us to reduce the overhead in almost half. So basically, we we can have these two versions of the protocol. One that does in-band synchronization with the, the pulse, the carrier pulse, synchronization carrier pulse, or have, or have out-of-band synchronization and this reduces the overhead in half. Sorry for the ignorance. Obvi obviously, it makes... Why would it? I because we have to wait for the long period of silence, and the long period of silence is basically the, uh, the same amount of time as the time to do an arbitration. And uh, so if we don't have to wait for that period of silence, which is necessary to extend the synchronization, if we don't have to, to wait for it, we basically we reduce the overhead in half. So this hardware, we can stack it, make sandwiches with a Micah Z and a CMU Firefly. Okay, still need to just to your liking. What? You will still need to wait for that Let's say I do out of band signaling communication of two numbers. You know what? There is a but you didn't hear it. You waited exactly after, you know, after. You wait for the next single no. sync pulse. And so then you had to actually wait for the entire two numbers. But you're assuming it's a peer to peer. Uh, this is there's a single master node that sends this out of band yeah, pulse. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so it, uh, it provides the, global signal. This is this is what is in a mode, and you see that a mode or one mode only has a receive. Okay. We have another, just one or two boards that transmit the sync pulse, and so this is a global sync. So it's a big, sync. Uh, big clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's you know, obviously if you have centralized clock, it's, it's easier, right? Yeah, we, we all know that. Uh, but we've a, a bit. You, know, you could look at this and say, "Well, this is so much hardware, and this will be costly." Right. Well, it is costly in terms of money because these transceivers are not cheap because they are not so mass produced as the other ones. But, but in terms of uh, energy, it's actually it's uh, it's it's kind of okay compared to, for example, one uh, very used transceiver. This is the transceiver that it's on a Z, and this experiment that you, that you're seeing here is basically what we've made. It was to make. Uh, 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 the transceiver in the Micah Z and, and our platform do the same, okay? With the same workload, both experiences. And basically, we were transmitting a dominant and a recessive bit 10 times in both, in both platforms, and we measured the energy to do that, that entire sequence. Uh, and actually, we were favoring the CC2420 because we know from our experiments this. The, the, the size of a, do, of a bit, what we used here, was the 192 microseconds, which is like the minimum time we know. We know that we, we cannot have it smaller than that in the, in the CC2420, because that's how long it needs to have the first uh, sampling of the medium. So that's 128 bit, uh, microseconds, sorry. So we actually know that this with this timing, it wouldn't work, but we still made the experiment that way so that we could compare the energy and we can see that this we are uh, considerably below on doing the same transaction. Is that global energy or power consumption? Yeah, this was Throughout. measured the whole mode, the, okay. the whole magazine. Okay, this was measured the whole mode, not just like in, in both cases, the, the whole mode. Okay, just 
In this one, we had the Mac Z, but we had switched off the CCD. 